Hey guys, Anthony, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to go over a market analysis, basically explaining how I personally trade ES and NASDAQ, how I trade the price action with no indicators, and how you can become consistently profitable if you're not yet, just by trading price action. So if you appreciate this video, give it a thumbs up, let us know you like it, and I can make more of them. Uh, so in this video, I'm just going to share a profitable strategy to trade futures, uh, intraday in the morning session only. So if you only have two hours a day to trade, then watch this video fully and you can use this skill and hone this skill by doing back testing and doing trading and getting the rep reps in yourself to see the things you want to see to make profitable trades. So basically we're trading market structure and we're looking for sweeps of liquidity and then we're going to be basically taking trades to the opposing side of liquidity. And it, this may sound complicated, but I'll, I'll explain it. Uh, so basically we'll just go over a couple of trading days in the morning and I'll, I'll go into some trades based on what I see and I'll explain what I see and why I took the trade. Uh, there was news that came out at 30, right? We spiked up and then came down, just took liquidity. Uh, that's a bearish market structure because we broke swing lows to the left. So now we're bearish. We're basically looking for shorts, but we are expecting lows to be taken out, you know, here, possibly down here at 923. Uh, but we'll have to watch and see. So I'm going to wait until I'm so already going down there, but I'm going to wait until about 930, 945. So there's some trading out of the way. There's 910, right? looks bearish. Okay, took out that liquidity, oh, push back up. All right, let me pause it. Perfect. So clearly bearish. You just want to look to the left, where's Lex liquidity? They took out everything actually to the left. Yeah, a lot of recent liquidity has been swept. Okay, so we're bearish. We swept a whole bunch of liquidity. So what I want to see is a rejection. This is already a rejection. I like this. Uh, I like usually like a little more buying. So I like a little, another candle to confirm. But when we have a rejection like this, you want to assume, you want to ask yourself, where would they want to take price next, right? But we want more confirmation of more buying. So I, I like this already as a start, but I want to see maybe one more candle. Okay, that's a double bottom, right? So the, an early entry is getting long here. And the first target is just resistance to the left. Like here, here's a, so. Basically, what I would do is I would get in, let's say, small size right now. So I would get in small size right here, uh, put the stop below the low, and then target resistance to the left, uh, basically the wick here. So that's already a two and a half hour, but this is too early. We want to see a little more. So you can't go heavy size here. You can't go heavy size. We get stopped out. We'll keep a running tab if we get stopped out, but I already like this. Uh, first target resistance to the left. Second target would be the wick high. Uh, and you're asking why? Because uh, zoomed out on the daily, we're bullish overall, but now we're bearish. We took out a bunch of lows. So where are we going to go next? Probably the opposite end, or at least into resistance to the left. Okay, so let me just get one candle. Okay, that looks even better. This, that looks even better. So I'll wait. I'll wait for a... Okay, nice. Nice. So we have a, a series of higher lows pushing up, a little bit of rejection. What I could do is add if there was another another candle that traded down into here. So basically, I would get my full size position. Full size position, I would add, say, here, uh, target. Most of it would be resistance to the left, but then runners would be for the wick high. Runners would be for the wick high. As soon as we came into resistance to the left, I'd move my stop to break even. Uh, but the overall TP would be this this high of liquidity that would be targeting. So now we'll just play another. All right, boom. So that's first TP. So that trade worked out great. Let's just say 30 points. Yeah, so 30 points on the first half size. So we're up 30 points. Half size. So we'll call it net plus 15 points. Let's say uh, full size is about four contracts. So half size would be two contracts times two contracts equals plus 600. Right, so we'll call that there. That's half size. Full size, let's say it's four contracts. And that's what we're at so far. Now stops are break even, and this will be our break even. We'll just because this is the other half of the trade, 928. Another, we have another two contracts basically here. And actually, I'm sorry. We didn't get in the other half. We didn't get in the other half. I am I, a, my mistake. So 
we're just going to consider that trade closed because we didn't get in full size. But we'll see. Okay, it came down, rejected. Uh, we'll get a half size. Half size here. Why? Because I still believe that we'll take liquidity out. So because of that, this gave an attractive entry. And I'm just going to move the stops down to the lows. So this one's just like about a one to one. We're in this trade here. And we'll see about half size again because of what? Oh, all right. So this is still good. This is a higher low. Came down to trading to left. Uh, Should have been more patient. Could have got could have got a better entry there. Uh, we'll just see what happens next. Okay, okay, and boom. All right. So plus thirty six points, half size, and plus thirty points. Half size times two contracts equals plus 720. So at this point, what time is it? It is 1050. So 1050, you started your day about 940. It's about one hour into the trading day and you're up 1300. So 1.3K, you're up by taking two half size trades. And that's a great start to the day. Honestly, at that point, two trades, two wins like that, I would call it a day. So 1300 for Wednesday, I'd be done unless I see something extremely attractive. So again, we'll go over this. So why did I take those trades? Okay, if you look to the left, you want to find liquidity. Liquidity just means where people's stops are. So typically what the market does is it, they, they take out stops. So they go to liquidity after liquidity has been taken. If there's rejection, if there's some buying in the opposite direction, you ask yourself, okay, where would they take price next if they're going in that direction? And the first hints of going in that direction are these wicks. It's the buying pressure on the upside. So once you get some of that buying pressure, you ask yourself, okay, if they took out all that liquidity to the downside, they would go for upside liquidity. The first upside liquidity is this wick to the left. This is all obvious, right? But sometimes they only take it into resistance to the left and continue the trend down. So that's why I had to have my first target here. Like this is clean trading to the left because there's no chop, there's no green candles, it's just red candles. So it's very easy to go up right, for price to go up. So price can very easily come here. That's why there's actually a rejection right there. And then it came down to support here to the left because there's another red candle. Trade it down, support to the left, and boom, push back up, take out this side, take out this side. After this, you ask yourself, okay, well, where would they go next? Um, the most obvious place to go next would be this list low right here, take out 918. Uh, and even all these wicks, possibly because there's a whole bunch of wicks here. People place all their stops there, but they probably place them. People probably move their stops up to here. So if I want to take another trade, I would just reduce my size because I'm already up a good amount. So it's like, why well, risk profits? If you already had two trades, you don't want to be over trading, right? So what I could do if I got more confirmation is take a short and target this low. Um, this is already a rejection candle. You could just short now. Uh, I wouldn't do this now, especially after already winning two trades. But if it's super small size, you could. You just gotta be careful because you don't wanna get in the habit of overtrading. You could take a trade like that. Uh, just have the stop above this wick. It's kind of glitching out for me, trading view, but there we go. So you have a stop there and you're in the trade now. Right here, once this next candle opens, you're in the trade, boom. So again, now we're in the short, let's say. First target is just support to the left because we're, we're now kind of bullish, right? We have a low. We have a high, we have a higher low and a higher high. So now we're, we're bullish. So first target would have to be down here for a one-to-one. -one. Second target would be liquidity to the left. So yeah, I would say I would be in this short, no problem. So this short, I feel I still feel good about just to resistance uh, to the left. So yeah, we'll, we'll go with that we're in, in this short. Um, okay, boom. So another 23 points, two contracts. Uh, actually, let's say it was quarter size. So it was one contract. Uh, now ran it for about four hundred sixty dollars. So net net total day, we're, we're up about one point eight k just by doing smaller size. And I'm making it look easy, but it's just because I've done this so many times where you see a liquidity sweep and you see a rejection, and you just ask yourself, where's price going to go next? It becomes obvious when you see it so many times. But yeah, like now this is a really bullish candle, so maybe that's it, and maybe we take out these highs again. Uh, but you know, it's getting tight now, so. There's not a lot of room, so I'm not going to take any trades because then even even if you take this long now, let's say you're like, oh, I really think it's going to go up. You take this long, 
I mean, the risk reward isn't good because you have to put it below that wick, you have to go about as high. It's a one to one or less, so no trade. So we'll just watch and see uh, where price trades next. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Okay. All the lows. Yeah. So took out all the lows. A little bit of buying, but we want to see more because then again, took out all the liquidity to the left. And you ask yourself, now maybe it's going to go to the upside. Maybe we'll come up here to 965. Right? I'd like to see some more buying, so we'll watch. Yeah, there's some buying, but it's a rejection candle. I mean, if you wanted to, at this point, we're over trading. If, if you take another trade, we're over trading. So I wouldn't be taking any more trades. Plus, it's 12 o'clock now, 1145. I'm done. I'm already done. So there's no point watching. Yeah, we're just going lower, so it doesn't matter. Um, however, the 2 to 3 p.m. is usually another session, so you can watch 2 to 3 p.m. All right, so we're, let's say we're in starting 2 p.m. Okay, so we made a low, we came up, uh, probably going to take out this high. No trade for me yet. If I wanted to, I could short here now because we have a rejection. I could target down here at the lows, but I don't want it yet because... I'm not sure. It, it's still early. It's like not even 2 p.m. I like to see a little bit more trading, like into 2:30, to see what the trend is. So okay, so we already we came back down. Yeah. So what I could do is take a long down here, if it price retrace down. Uh, if it stops here, I'll just have to let it be because it's not a good risk reward ratio. Yeah. So we took out the high. Uh, we're bullish, right? Bullish. We could keep this low. Let me see what happens. I need a little more trading. Um, problem for me is there's still a lot of clean trading here to the left. So I think that it, it it's, we could just push up into there. But I can't take a long because we're too far. Not a good risk reward ratio. So let's watch. Okay, okay. Um, Here's what I will do. I think we want to fill the price uh, to the left. So if we get an amazing fill, if price comes all the way down, I would take this long. And first target would just be above this high. Second target would be up here to the left. So let's just watch and see this one. Uh, that's good enough for me. So uh, I'm taking on that close. Good enough. Uh, this is quarter size. No, this is half size, half size. This one feels pretty good. Half size trade. First target here. Second target up here. We'll just put the target up here. Yeah. So that's basically our target. But as soon as we get above these highs, I move my stops to break even. If we do get above this highs. Okay. Nice. That's exactly what I want to see. So we have a retest, some buying. Now, are we going to take out this high or are we going to take out this low? Only time will tell. Okay. Okay. Looks like we're going lower. Okay. Ah, okay. Stopped out. So half size stopped out 27 points. Basically puts us back to about one one point one K on the day. So this one, yeah, basically I saw a bunch of unfinished business to the left. So I really thought that we would get up there first before taking out this liquidity. I was wrong. And my bias, you know, had me blinded. So, you know, it's part of the game, right? In the, in the morning session, I said, Hey, once we take out liquidity to the high, we're going to take out liquidity lower. But I got blinded because I saw a bunch of clean trading to the left. And I thought we would go up there first before taking out this liquidity. So I hope that makes sense. Let me know in the comments down below if that makes sense to you. What I'm trading is swing highs and swing lows and then liquidity. So if you see a bunch of wicks or a bunch of trading to the left and price takes out that and then gets a rejection candle, you ask yourself where would price go next to take out stops? That's the best way I can describe it. And you'll basically take high reward to risk ratio trades in either direction based on that to target the next liquidities. Best time to do that is, you know, 9.30, well, 9.45, let the dust settle, 9.45 to 11.30 and then 2 to 3 p.m. That's going to conclude this video. Give this video a thumbs up if you appreciate it. 
If you like these kind of videos, I can do more of these and just go through a trading day and just show the trades that I would take and the explanations of why I would take them on different time frames. But that's going to conclude this one. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.